Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. And all that is within me, praise His holy name. And all that is within me, praise His holy name. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome once again. It's your favorite girl. Princess Cleeton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> Welcome once again. Uh, hope you're having a great day. Hope your day has been ex exemplary. It has been beautiful. Mine has been awesome so far. For some weird reason, I just feel like today has been a really great day. I don't know why, but it has just been amazing. I feel like um, a lot of things are just opening up to me. God is doing and saying a lot of things to me that on a normal basis, he probably would not have, but he's just doing them. Sometimes I don't feel like I deserve it, but then he chooses to do it. So I just enjoy it while he does it for me. Welcome once again. It's your favorite program, a chapter a day, aka a card for short. On here, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power because that's the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heavenly view, that's the whole idea. We don't just want to live on earth and then become a castaway. God forbid. We want to live on earth and live in heaven as well. We want to spend eternity with God in heaven. We want to have that beautiful moment, that beautiful connection and relationship that we had when God had in his mind when he did creation. When he created man and put man here on earth. When he created man and put man in the Garden of Eden, basically. So, um, we want to experience that again. Um, we can actually experience that here on earth. Like how we call for God's kingdom to come on earth. It says in the in the Lord's Prayer, it says, That kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, there's a possibility of also experiencing the heaven on earth before you actually go to heaven physically. We can only do that when we connect with Jesus. We can only do that when we pray that prayer with a good heart and a clean heart and it will be answered okay while we're at it as well we also create a, a king james version audio bible and after that we study the word of god as well so we perfectly study the word of god so that it becomes a practical reality in our lives we can leave it we can we can do it perfectly so that people can see the word. There's some people that will never read a physical Bible, but your life might be that Bible that they'll read just enough of it for them to read and then get to be saved or get to come to Christ or get to return to their first love and stuff like that. I'm excited today because a special person was born today. So let's go. We have to hand over the session to God. After doing that, we get to do the birthday party Birthday party, we pray for pre birthday people. Then we go to the Bible party where we create the audio Bible first, and then we now study the Word of God together. Today, our Bible party is taken from Proverbs chapter 5, and he has 23 verses. 
Proverbs chapter 5 has 23 verses. And that's where our Bible party is taking from today. And I hope that we're going to have a soul time together. So let's get right on with it. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your mercy and your protection. We thank you for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for all that you've done. You're doing, you're still to do in our lives. We thank you for taking up every issue, every problem that should have been ours. We thank you for allowing your son to carry all this burden for us and give us direct access again to you, O oh God. We're forever grateful. We don't take it for granted. So, Lord, we'll come before your throne of grace today that you're going to speak to us in a special way. Teach us all those techniques and methods that are necessary for us to be able to live the Christ life and end up spending eternity with you. Teach us the ideas and the techniques that will be able to help others to also get to know you, to also get to know your son, Jesus Christ. Know the finished work that he did on the cross and accept this so that they don't frustrate the grace. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Increase while we decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, experienced throughout this edition of the chapter today. We're grateful, Lord. Take preeminence, both now and forevermore. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say, Jainomus, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Let's get the birthday party started. So the first person on our birthday book is Mam Mokia Mimi. Mam Mokia Mimi is actually a very good friend of my best friend that's how i got to know her she's a very welcoming person she's a very friendly person and she also has this really bright broad smile that i can never forget and we had this way we used to laugh at each other there was something that was very um it was not very common then and then we used to say we would have it i don't know if it was microwave no 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 that's actually mom loom imelda where the ones who used to call each other my microwave sister <laughs> Oh my god and come to think of it i have a microwave that i use like almost all the time but then it was like it was a fancy thing it was a classy people like you know so i think mom mokia miranda actually um i don't know if she was with us when we're doing that thing but she's a very nice and very friendly person very welcoming and she's one person who go all out to help her friends to make sure that her friends are good her friends are fine and all that happy birthday to you mom very pretty as well. The next person is Mr. Martin Dampere. Mr. Martin Dampere, I actually got to meet him one way when I was in Ghana. We met in church. He was an amazing person, very calm and reserved, so very quiet. But when it comes to doing stuff for the church, you know, we I think there was a point we went for evangelism or we went for um, cleaning, like we're cleaning around the around the area where our church was, the quarter. We decided to clean that quarter like our own community service, like act of service that we could give, not just preaching the gospel and all that. But while we're doing it, we're actually evangelizing as well. I think it was community cleaning. I don't know if it was just community cleaning or it was basically evangelism, but I think cleaning had I was added to it. So it was really nice. He will be all there. I remember there was this time that um, we did that thing and he brought us some energy drinks i think milo drinks or something it was so nice i'm like people go all out and give us all this beautiful and exceptionally nice time while we're doing the work of god happy birthday to you and god bless you the next person is mom sharon ayo her excellency that's how i call her because her husband mr raymond ayo actually would eventually be a president so i call him my president his excellency happy birthday to you mom sharon ayo i remember talking to her she's a very very welcoming very friendly person very down to earth and of course she was going to help me um do a research on some particular things just getting to know her was really really amazing i'm grateful that i got to connect with her and we really really connected and it was so nice we don't get to chat often like talk often but when we get to have an opportunity to connect with each other, the connection is outright beautiful. She's a beautiful soul. Calm, very composed, very, I mean, like classy and cool. And then she loves God. That I can't forget. And then the next person is Mom Queen, Queen B. Enyowe. Mom Queen B. Enyowe Siri is actually my friend that we were great friends when we were in primary school. Very great friends. 
And then you can imagine how how many years had passed, maybe 20 or more years had passed and we're not seeing each other and then we reconnected on Facebook. Believe me, when I first of all saw the name on Facebook, I wasn't sure. I just saw the picture and I wasn't sure. She had grown into a fine, amazing woman and then she loves God with a passion. So I wasn't sure. I was just like, oh, let me take a leap of faith. It's a picture that is on the profile. What's the worst that can happen? If I talk to her and she's not the one, fine. And then we get talking. We get talking and talking and talking and talking and boom. And I'm like, well, you're three, right? And she's like, of course I'm three. Like, you couldn't. I said, well, you looked a, a lot different than you were when we were younger. You know, so I'm grateful to Facebook, actually. I'm grateful to social media that it's there. Because that's a friend I would have lost, like, for forever. Because I would never have been able to connect to her. Like, we are in different towns and countries apart. And after primary school, primary school, we didn't know anything about social media. We didn't know anything about mobile phones. Our parents were the only ones who had mobile phones. And maybe just the dad would have a mobile phone. And it's not like we could just own our dad's phones and stuff. And in primary school, we are not even thinking. You just be thinking of... Okay, maybe you're seeing this person for the last time. You're just thinking that by some sheer miracle, you guys are still going to meet again someday like that. We did meet, though. We met on social media, and it has been beautiful. She also loves God with a passion, which is something that I love with a passion as well. Passionate passion when people love God and they're serving God wholeheartedly. She's also one of such persons. And then the next person is Mam Gonga Otans. Mam Gonga Otans is actually, um, I think, a classmate to my other sister. They went to the same um, school together. And then at some point, I came and attended school at that same place. So they were kind of taking care of me like, oh, let's take care of our younger sister. She's an amazing person, very welcoming and very friendly as well. And of course, she also loves God. The next person is Mr. Elvis Kinyang. I got to know Mr. Elvis Kinyang on Monster City Discipleship. This is a group that was founded by Daddy Terrence at Songwear. And it just started like um, maybe a group of young people who desire to go all out and spread the gospel and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And then eventually we got registered and then we're doing stuff together. I remember we went for, his, I think, maybe two or three outreaches with Mr. Elvis Kinyang. And later on, he traveled, and then he came back again, and then we met. So it was really, really beautiful. He's a very, very amazing person. He's a servant of God, loving God with a passion. And, of course, he also sends out daily devotionals. I don't know if it's daily or weekly. Let me not get that twisted. Let me stick to weekly so that if it's daily, then it's better. So rather than say daily and then it's weekly, it's not going to be funny because people will be looking forward to getting the devotionals and they're not getting and they're wondering like what's going on. So I think it's a weekly devotional. I'm not sure. And I know as often as I get to see it, I think it's daily. But let's just stick to weekly. He does devotionals. He sends out devotionals all the time. Um, he also sends out a lot of amazing messages that are thought-provoking and they can get you to be on your toes and then want to do things for the kingdom as much as it is. So, you know, me and people who love God, we're just like finger and nails. So, of course, that's another man of God who loves God with a passionate passion. The next person is Mr. Cham for Mukum. Mr. Cham for Mukum, I actually got to know him through a mutual friend too. So, the thing is, we were actually on the group. We're actually in a group for uh, Think Tank Positive, I think. Think Tank Positive, that was a group. We're actually in that group together. And then I got to know one of his very good friends. And then later on, we connected through that, his friend. He was in the group, but I know you're connected with him, like, personally. So he's also one amazing person. He loves to help the less privileged. He, he loves to do a lot of projects that has to do with helping people and stuff like that. So he's actually an amazing person. He also loves God. He sings and he plays musical instruments. Oh my God, what a combo in one human being. Like you love God, you're serving God, you're fine, <laughs> you sing, you can play instruments. Oh my God, like Lord, the Lord made you well. Happy birthday to you, bro. And then the next person is one of my lecturers at the University of... Um, Sikimangpal University, 
where I studied in Ghana, he was one of like my best, best instructors, the best of the best, Mr. Mike Yamwa, mon prof préféré. That's how I used to call him because he's he likes French. Well, he doesn't speak so much of it, but he tries. He tries, considering the fact that he's not a French-speaking person. He tries the best he can. And I always call him one prof prefer, and he would laugh so much so that, oh my God, he was really an amazing person. He's that kind of person that when he teaches you, you know that he knows his craft. It's not just, he didn't come to play. He came to make you understand. He made, he came to instill knowledge. He came to actually make you learn and know, not just learn for passing your exams and stuff. He knew what he was all about and it was very beautiful. Thank you so much. And then, the last but not the least, let's do drum roll. Boom! It's my daddy. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Daddy Julius. So, Daddy Julius is my pastor here in Thailand. The pastor of Lighthouse Chapel International. Reverend Pastor Julius. So... This is my dad who loves God with a passion. He's always looking out for me. Always checking up on me. I mean, and then there are times that he gets to make some declarations on me that I'm like, did God, did he hear what I was saying to God? Like, it's just so on point and in line with what I'm asking God for or I'm talking to God about or I'm bothered about. When he gets to give those declarations to me personally, it works. I don't know about other people, but it always works for me. And I love the fact that he's so down to earth. He's so caring. He's so humble. I, the, the thing is, God has always given me dads that I, ha, I always try as much as I can to balance all the dads that God has ever given me since I lost my biological dad. They treat me. There's the possibility that if I'm not careful, I might... Um, if I'm not careful, I might undermine their grace as their pastoral grace and then stick to the daddy grace instead. All those graces, they are different blessings that come with their different um um with their different positions in my life. So the dad grace is different from the grace as a pastor. And if I don't revere any of those graces, I will not get the blessings that is that is connected to those positions that they have in my life sometimes people get it mixed up they get it they get it confused they get it twisted <clears throat> i'm not saying that if you don't revert the grace of god in a man of god's life or in your dad's life or in your pastor's life or whoever you're not going to go to heaven that's a different thing entirely <laughs> if you're not rude to them anyways because if you're rude to them it's an outright wrong thing and rude people have their place where they'll go to i'm talking about maybe not totally like revenge not totally like giving them the honor that is due to them you know and you're like oh what it's not like he's holding my life or something something he doesn't hold your life but there are some blessings that if you're not respecting that office that god has given him you will not enjoy the blessings it's just obvious so if i have a way that i can get extra blessings so he's my dad when he's blessing me as my dad, the blessing is there. So if I have an opportunity of getting extra blessings as to reverence him as a pastor, what do you think? You think I don't want it? I want it. If you don't want it, it's okay. It's okay by you. Don't reverence the pastoral office that he has. Revere only him as a dad. You'll get the dad's blessings. So it's just the same thing. It says your mother and your father, they'll bless you too. So if you, if you don't revere your mother and your father, the blessings will not come to you. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll go to hell. But there are some blessings that are attached to honoring your father and mother that you will not get. It is biblical and it works. So I've always had dads that are like in this kind of positions that sometimes if I'm not very careful and very keen, I might actually miss the blessings in one of the offices because I'm just going to be on the extreme. Either I'm just so focused at the fact that he's my pastor and then i lose the daddy blessings or i'm so focused that he's my dad and i lose the pastor blessing <laughs> but god has been helping me he he knows how to switch to my dad to being my dad and switch to being my pastor and i just love it so it kind of helps me happy birthday to you 
Reverend Pastor Julius, my daddy, daddy JP. God bless you and bless you and bless you and bless you. I mean, like, my daddy's so young and fine. Like, sometimes when I put a picture, I've been looking for my picture with him. I have lots and lots of pictures with him, but there's this particular picture that when I always put, people are like, your dad be young like that? Of course. Of course. My dad be young like that. I'm fine like that too. Happy birthday to you, daddy. I really, really do love you from the bottom of my heart. So let's go. Let's pray for the birthday people. Happy birthday once again to Mam Mokia Mimi Fominyoy. Happy birthday to Mr. Martin Dampere, to Her Excellency Sharon Ayo, to Queen B Enyoe, to Mam Gonga Otans, to Mr. Elvis Kinyang, to Mr. Cham Fomukum, to Mon Prof Prefere, Mr. Mike Yawa, Ya Yamwa, Mr. Mike Yamwa, and the last but not the least, to my daddy. Reverend Pastor Julius. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born today, oh God. We thank you for opening the windows of heaven and pouring out the treasures of your blessings and rebuking the devourer from their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that as you open these beautiful pages on their lives, write beautiful stories that will bring transformation, deliverance, and everybody will see and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause them to stand out and not fit in, oh God. That as they continuously fulfill purpose and do that which you have called them to do and you created them to do, oh God. They might get to a point where they feel overwhelmed, they feel like they want to give up or back out. So hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way walk down in it. They will not derail, they will not stray the path, they will stay on course and do that which they were called and created to do. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to bless them that you open the windows of heaven and pour the treasures of your blessings upon their lives and you also open doors to them that no man can shut and shut every door that is not of you lord that you teach them all that it takes to be able to connect with the right people divinely and the right things divinely and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress oh lord but i pray that you teach them all that it takes to get to the top and only get to the top but get to the top and stay there permanently all for your glory and lord we pray oh god that they'll be the ones oh god manifesting to the growing nation that is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god Give them all that it takes to be able to stand their ground and not be moved, oh God, regardless of what people think or what people say. Lord, cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and world changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, oh God, that you guide and lead them aright, that you show them the path where they should go. And when they get there, they will not depart from it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you bless them with the choices of your blessings. I pray, oh God, that you cause them to be a blessing to your generation and beyond. As blessing and compass them as a shield round about. No weapon formed or fashion against them shall prosper. And any tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn, Lord. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to teach them how to trust in you, how to depend in you, how to rely on you totally and completely, oh Lord. Father, we say thank you. We pray, Lord, that you're going to bless them, oh God. You're going to open your blessings upon their lives oh god that is necessary to not only get to the top but get there and stay there permanently you're the master strategy so we believe in you lord father we say thank you we really really do appreciate you we don't take it for granted oh god for the love that you've given to us for the love that you've given to these people for the years that you've added to their lives oh god father let the blessings as it overflows upon them oh god let people literally rub off of the blessings even as they come in contact with them oh god Father, there will be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing and answering. Perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sound 226 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, rejoicing, celebration, and jubilation, all to the glory of your name, O God. Father, that none of them is going to miss it. Each and every one of them is going to get it right. They're going to be blessed. They're going to be transformed. They're going to be delivered. They're going to be blessed totally and completely, all for your glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, awesome God. Thank you, King of Glory, for hearing us, O oh God. Give each and every one of them a sound 126 state. State of continuous laughter, celebration, jubilation. And if you try to come, they'll be here same time next year. Testifying of all the awesome such things you've done in their lives because this is going to be their best birthday yet. Thank you, Lord God. Enlarge that coast. Increase them, O oh God, on every side. 
We seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus, knowing that you've heard and answered. We know that it's done, signed, sealed, and dusted. So we say thank you. Thank you so, so very much. And each and every one of us will say, a ginormous amen. Lord, open the eyes of those who are open the eyes of those who are born today, oh Lord, so that they would see and understand definitely where they're supposed to be. They will strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right. Thank you, Lord God, because you deserve it. Thank you, King of Glory, because you're a faithful father. Let money make money in their pockets. Blessing me, blessings in their lives. Favor me, favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with the garment of praise, honor and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the saints shall say, Ginormous, Amen. But I sing the Amen. So let's go. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Come on, come on. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Amen. Let it be in their lives. God bless you all tremendously. And may he fill your bands with all good things. Enlarge your coast. And do for you that which no man can do. I always get to say I love you so, so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, amazing people. And... Mm, mwah. Joyeux anniversaire à tout le monde. Je vous aime avec tout mon cœur. It's Bible party time. Let's get this Bible party going. Ready or not, here I come. Ready, 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 here I come. Ready or not, here I come. Ready, 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 here I come. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's go. Sorry. I felt like there was something on my tongue. Something not nice. Let's go. Proverbs chapter 5. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than honey, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the part of life. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised to reprove? And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me? I was almost in all evil. In the midst of the congregation and assembly, drink waters out of thy own cistern, and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own, and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed, and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind, and pleasant roe. Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman, and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the evil. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. 
His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the court of his sins. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say a dynamis. Thanks be to God. What did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? Let's take you back. Are you ready? Let's go. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Wisdom and understanding are very important. It says, wisdom is the principal thing in all that get and get wisdom and get understanding. Of course, um, they always say knowledge is power, but I say knowledge is explosive and tremendous when it is put to use you can have knowledge and if you do nothing about the knowledge that you have you are no different from someone who has no knowledge at all so it's not just the knowledge that brings tremendous transformation or that brings explosion or that brings i mean something really spectacular and great it is actually the application of the knowledge so knowledge in itself doesn't have that much power as people make it seem but application of that knowledge whether good or bad can be very very catastrophic or very very beautiful so yeah and it says that thou mayest that thou mayest regard discretion and thy lips get it right so lips if you also want your lips to speak the right things and do the right things at the right time then you need to get the right information because sometimes we speak jazz we spew rubbish from our mouths but when you have the right knowledge when you have the right understanding you'll be able to do it. like sometimes i get people arguing on stuff that they shouldn't be arguing about and they're spewing so much rubbish and so much jargon but it just feel like they are correct because for the sake of arguments they have to win it's not about winning it's about understanding I, I, God is helping me lately. He has helped me for the past maybe about two years. I'm not perfect. I'm not where I used to be, but I'm not where I was before now. Man, I used to try as much as possible to explain myself, to explain things. I'm the person who will tell you, I'll give you every nitty gritty details of a thing. I'm either giving you the details or I'm not even talking about it. That's me. I tried when I had this relationship where the guy was like, oh, you, 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 like you're over explaining at all. Just tell me straightforward. And I'm like, what? I can't, I don't know how to do that. I've not learned how to do that. I have to learn. So you know how they always say that, oh, in relationships, they have to be compromised. You don't just say, oh, this is who I am. And then that's it. You know, try to like compromise in the, in the tiniest way that you can just try to do something. So there I go and I'm like, okay. So I don't, I don't now talk much because I know that if I have to talk, I have to explain. So I don't, I'd rather not just talk at all than to want to talk and then just be cut off. Or I have to just say, oh, how was your day? Great. That's all. How's your day? Oh, wow. My day was great. So I went for this, 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 this. I'm, I want to, I would want to tell you why it was great or how great it was. So you can maybe feel the experience or feel the thing with me. If it's a painful scenario, if it's a beautiful scenario, like, okay. So I tried and tried and tried. And then all of a sudden the guy starts complaining. You're not talking to me. You're not telling me your stuff. You know, I'm like, young man, Stop confusing me. Take a peek. Which one do you want? You want the me who talks and explain or you want the me who is quiet? Which one do you want? Stop confusing me. <laughs> People who go to native doctors will say, please eh, stay on one spot. Let the thunder just choose you. Pick a place and stand. <laughs> stop confusing thunder. <laughs> I beg, stop confusing the angels of God. When they want to come and give you something, they're looking for you. You're in the camp of the devil. You are supposed to be in the camp of God and then they're coming to come and look for you. They look for you everywhere. They can't find you because you're in the wrong camp. You're not where they're supposed to have met you. They said this joke some time ago that there was this lady who, she died. She was actually dark skinned. She died and she pleaded with God like, God, I'm too young. This can't be. It's not fair. So you have to send me back. Let me, let me get even just a year or two or something like that. I can't remember if she gave a specific time, but this is me now putting it in specific time. So probably she told God, like, I need two or three years and stuff. And God says, oh, granted. 
and then she gets back boom the first thing she goes she goes to do a, a i don't know what i was a pigmentation surgery or what i don't know she became so fair it was so interesting like it felt like it was an entirely different human being so she got out of the salon or from the spa or wherever she went to get the whole transformation thing and a car knocked her and she died and she came back that was a joke though she came back to god and she was like god you said you're gonna give me three more years what's going on and god is like when did i say that to you and she's like you did and she was trying to explain so she explained the scenario and god was like what is that you <laughs> She has so changed that God did not recognize her, and so she had to get. <laughs> Please, child of God, be who you are, be proud of who you are. You are created in God's image and likeness. There's nothing anybody can do. Don't make people make you feel less of who you are because of your skin color, because of your hair texture, because of how you look, or because don't don't let it, don't let these people. I beg of you, don't let them, don't, don't let them okay and then it goes on to say um let's go back let's get back to the scripture it says for the lips of a strange woman no that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge okay so that's fair so you want to say the right things you want to do the right things you want to live the right way then you also need knowledge you need this knowledge and you need the commandments you need to understand them you need to get the wisdom in them understand them and then put it to practice like i said so it says for the lips of a strange woman as an hon drop as an honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil so i'm wondering like people always say that oh Women like to hear good things, you know, like, that's why Eve was deceived and all. And then I begin to wonder, what do these old men hear from these young ladies that they wipe out their account? You know, like a 60-year-old man who is supposed to be educated and wise and all you think. You would think they should be educated, wise and all. You see a 20-year-old girl dealing with him and wiping out his account like there's no tomorrow. Some people think it's really just about the whole sex thing. No, it's not. It's not. There's probably some things. This is what they're saying here. That her lips drop. They drop things like a honeycomb. Hmm. So who is, now more, who is now more persuasive? Like, who now talks people into things? Sometimes they always say that to get to a man, you get to the wife first. You get to the woman in her life. The woman that is the closest to her life, you get to that woman, you get to her. It could be the mom, it could be the wife. It's always mostly those two. Mom or wife. If you get to any of those women, you probably get to the man. As fast as you can even imagine. Yeah. So the enemy got to... The enemy got to Eve. And then Eve got to... I don't, I don't understand. God showed Adam this tree. God showed Adam this fruit. He definitely knew all about it. Till date, I'm still beginning to wonder what Eve told Abraham. What Eve told Adam that Adam just took that fruit and ate without questioning. Like, welcome, Mama Mambo Benis. Welcome, 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 woman of God. You are highly, highly welcome. I've missed you on the chapter today. Hope you're good. Hope the baby is good too. And hobby as well. Hope you all are doing great. God bless you. Okay. And it says that, but her end is bitter as one wood, sharp as a two-edged sword. That's the interesting thing, okay? Um, sometimes people make it look like sin is not enjoyable. It's a lie. Let nobody deceive you. Sin is enjoyable. Even the Bible it says say it says sin is pleasurable, but for a moment. That's the part. Most people just read the sin is pleasurable and then forget the remainder. That's, it's like, it's our de facto. That's how we young people are. We always read the beautiful part and leave the part that has maybe an instruction, a command that we need to go, that will activate that thing or that will make the thing, um, that will make us qualified for a thing or unqualified for it. That will make us be able to enjoy some things or not get to into some things at all, at all. We don't read those parts. We read the part that is beautiful for us, the part that we love, the part that will tickle our fancy, the part that our itchy ears would want to hear. 
we stick to those parts and then the parts that we're really supposed to hear do and act about we don't may god help us in jesus name see this part so from the start it will be sweet or it will be nice it is for a moment then you see now two edges sword is cutting you here and cutting you there cutting you left and cutting you right it says her mouth is smoother than oil what Tell me this girl has a sweet tongue she can talk you into anything and that's why it's it's true i read a certain book and they said that a woman is made to influence a man is made to implement a woman is made to influence so if you understand the power you have as a woman, you will not be fighting to be equal with a man. You will just understand your place and then be influencing him to do the things that you want him to do. That's it. It's that simple. It's that simple. Instead of using the power of influence that God has given you, you are struggling to be equal with a man. Me, I don't want to be a man. I want to be pampered. I want to be wooed. I want to be pursued. That's how it's supposed to be you. Now, so I take sip of Bible, and that's what I want to happen to me. The last time I checked, I don't enjoy being a man. I don't envy it at all, even. I don't envy it at all. I want to be a woman. I always want to be a woman. And Mom Benny says, oh, family is good. And may God help. God will really help us, a woman of God. I'm glad to know family is good. God will help us. So, a woman, you have the power to influence. Use it right. When you influence your husband the right way, you guys will progress. And that favor that God promised you begin to see. But when you influence your, wrong, your husband the wrong way, you both will end up in destruction. That's how it is. That's just how you see it. So when you understand how much of power you have over, your, over the people that are around you, as a woman, you'll be careful whom you allow to be in your space especially consistently you'll be very careful believe me <laughs> it says um but her end is bitter as warm up sharp as a two-edged sword it's destruction oh you're headed for destruction they don't tell you they will never tell you the destruction that's ahead of you he'll just show you all the flashy things that he'll give you and then boom you're stuck boom you've gotten there and then he starts showing you his real self after You've enjoyed a few, maybe a few days. Some people it's a few months. Some people it's a few weeks. Some people it's not even up to that same day. He will start showing you manyaka after you have already made the covenant. <laughs> but God is still not mad at you. Even after you have made that covenant, God still wants you back. That's how good God is. And then God says, her feet goes down to the dead. Her steps take hold on hell. That's the place where you end up. If you end up in this kind of woman's house, that's the place where you end up. This woman's house is kind of a representation of most of our lives. It's a kind of representation of most of our lives. Our lives are looking like, oh, all oh, jolly, but it's not as jolly, jolly, jolly. It's looking all nice, all beautiful, but sometimes it's just a facade. It's just people are just putting up face. It's just a chameleonish kind of thing. You want people to see the side of you, and so you get to that place, to that environment that has that kind of side. But may God help us that we'll do things right and will not deceive ourselves and deceive people. Funny enough, we cannot deceive God, so that will not even reach. It says, Lest thou shouldest ponder the part of life, her ways are movable, that that thou canst not know them she's always changing always changing you really cannot be sure you really cannot trust this kind of person hear me now therefore all you children and depart not from the word depart not from the words of my mouth when god is insisting on you not to depart from the words of his mouth it means it's serious remove thy way far from her and come not nigh the door of her house do not go and be playing with temptation. My pastor was just preaching this last Sunday and said, some of you, you'll be claiming, oh, that you go and then one sister is touching you. Like, imagine Joseph's scenario. One sister is touching you and doing stuff and you're like, Kaba Shandara Kaba. I rebuke. It's not time to rebuke. It's time to flee. Flee. The Bible says flee. There. Flee means that there. 
disappear if you can. Ha! Huh. The Bible says, flee the appearance of evil. You cannot come and be saying, oh, Shandanga, Dabra, you want to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues, not they happen, so. Before your hormones get the best of you, carry yourself, run away from that place. Carry yourself and run away from that place. So don't even go you near her door. The Bible says flee. And it, is, it says flee what? The appearance. Oh, it looks like it's. You already know the woman's job. So going there means that you know you know the results that you attain. You know. So flee the appearance of it. It's not even it. Oh. Flee the appearance of it. It's up to you whether you obey God's command. Me who has been a strong will person, I used to say I was very strong will at all. You almost caught up with me. Oh. So me, I'm not encouraging anybody. We all have our different destinies and all the things we believe in and stand for. But I tell you the truth, eh? <laughs> the good Lord will help us in this generation. We need his help. Hear me now, therefore, all you children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Keep the words of God's mouth very seriously. Take them very seriously. Don't joke around with them. Remove thy way from from her, and come and come not nigh the door of her house. Don't even go near. Don't even go close. If you see from afar, it looks like it. Deal with it. You see from afar, it looks like it. Deal with it. Flee. Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist him with all that you've got. And he says, Let strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of strangers. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. That's it. Sometimes we think that this whole intercourse thing is just a normal thing. It's, just, it's not though. There's body and soul connections and all those things. And it's not funny. It's not funny. Because when I saw a picture of the inner of someone who has multiple partners and stuff like that. And the person had, I think they are repented or something. And then they were trying to give a vivid picture of how someone who has multiple sex partners, their inside is. And we saw this whole little, little heads. And the explanation was that when I have an encounter with someone who is also a multiple sex partner, I'm actually collecting all that the, all the soul ties that the person has collected from the first person that he slept with. And then me too, I'm coming to connect to it. As I connect to this person, I'm taking their own craziness, their soul ties and stuff. And then I'm taking the soul tie that I've collected from the other person. And then he goes again and sleeps. Ah, before you get married, before you get into the real deal, you're carrying a tone load of... It's crazy. It's really crazy. May the good Lord help us in Jesus' name. It says, Let strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labor be in the house of strangers. Of course, that's exactly what's going to happen, right? If you're paying, if you're patronizing all this, that business, where's your money going to? It's going to the world. And thou mourn at last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. You're so worried about how your flesh and your body is feeling and all those things. If you die now, this body and so this body and whatever will just drop down and will be destroyed and will be consumed and stuff. But you, you. I'm so sorry. What is your desire? What do you want? You don't, Do you want strangers to take over your stuff? Do you want strangers to do you like that? Enjoy the fruits of your labor? God forbid. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, the spirit man is remaining. Where do you think your spirit man is going to spend eternity? Says, and say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised Refuse, reprove, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear 
to them that instructed me. Some of us who don't have a teachable spirit at all. Those who are teaching us and saying stuff we don't want to listen. Because we feel like we'll become the next big shot. May the good Lord help us so that all these things should not get into our heads. All these things should make us stay humble and practical and as real as possible. It says, they have not obeyed the voice of the teacher, so we need to have a teachable spirit. We need to be able to learn from those who have gone ahead of us. And it says, I was almost in all, I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly, drinking water out of thine own cisterns and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be despaired abroad and rivers of water in the streets. This is goodness. This is a nice things God is about to do. Let them be only thine and not strangers with thee. Don't take somebody's thing that is not yours. Let it only be yours and stick to yours and keep doing what you have to do. It says, um, let thy fountains be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. A lot of us when we're younger give us some things and it could be a physical wife. It might be not yet, but God gave us some things and we we'll probably have not done them yet. And so God is blessing our fountain so that we can do those things now. We can get back to it and do it. He's giving us an extra time to prepare and get the things right. Stay connected to the wife of your youth. is the best thing that can ever happen. Let her be as loving as a loving hind and a pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee always with her love. Sometimes it feels like this scripture is only for married people. What about unmarried people? It's also the part of you setting up and doing stuff so that God should be heard, seen, and experienced. So it goes on and it says, um, And why will thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Sometimes we need to ask ourselves questions. When we're about to do some of these things that we do, we need to ask ourselves some serious questions and some personal questions. Some of those questions can help you get a clear head and then you get things right again. Lord, help us. Truly help us. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. Deserve the praise. And it says, Let her be as a loving hind and please and roll. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And be thou ravished always with her love. And why will thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Why? Just why? Why would you leave your amazing family? And go do this. Why would someone leave their relationship to do this? Why? For the way of man are before the eyes of the Lord. And he pondered all his genes. For the way of man are before the eyes of the Lord. And he pondered all his goings. How are, how are iniquities shall take the wicked? His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be boldened by the courts of his sin. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly. May the good Lord help us not to die without instruction. May we be the ones that will study the word of God and take it seriously. Sometimes the thing might just be 
Like, uh, sometimes the thing might just be like, well, what is this all about? But then you sit down and you have a great time with that and you're fixing. Lord, we pray that you're going to bless us. You're going to guide us. You're going to relieve us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Father, we know you're a faithful God. We know you're a God who never sleeps nor fails. You're the God who never fails. You're a God who is always on time. You're a God who never misses. You're a God who always gets it right. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing us. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to help us stay intact. You're going to help us to stay on course, O oh God. That no matter what happens, we'll not open light to our hearts, O oh God. Father, that when it's done and dusted, you give us the best of that. May it be awesome. May it be an amazing time with you, O oh God. Father, thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We magnify you, O God. We bless your holy name. We give you all the praise. Help us to be the kind of person that you want to see all the time. Lord, bless us. Bless us. Guide us. Lead us in the way that you want us to go. And if it's already to come, you have us blessed. You have us standing by. And for the sick person, oh God, Father, I pray that you're going to come through for them, Lord. Come through for them, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just worship you. Amen. We magnify you. We magnify you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for all that you've done, all you do, and all you still to do. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for always hearing us. Thank you for always loving up on us. Thank you for always doing beyond what we can even ask or imagine. Lord, I pray that you're going to bless us, our activities, our days, our careers. Lord, we say thank you. We truly bless you. For in Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for whatever we want. Lord, be thou faithful, God. Be thou glorified, be thou magnified. Empower us, O God. Cleanse us, O God. Make us whole again. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you're going to just continuously empower us and empower every single person who comes to listen to this a chapter idea, whatever time, whatever day. <clears throat> we appreciate you and you know you're a faithful God. We know that you do beyond what we can even ask, think, or imagine. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that this wedding and this day is going to be super awesome. It's going to be just totally and completely beautiful. It's going to be outright amazing. Lord, thank you, O God, for hearing and answering us, for always being there for us, even when we do not deserve it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. We have our audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, O God. Instagram and LinkedIn are the newest, O God. And we have the New Testament running on there. We have the Old Testament on Facebook and TikTok. We have it all over the place. Please. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you and thank you.
Father, we thank you for another amazing edition. We thank you for always being there, always providing for us, protecting us, always giving us the feedback that we need to grow. Lord, we say thank you. We truly do appreciate you. We really, really do. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you're going to continuously be a blessing in our generation and beyond. Continuously use us for your glory. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Tomorrow is going to be Proverbs chapter 6. Don't forget to read before time and come back here. Let's have a sweet time together. Have a great, awesome, really beautiful week. Mm -hmm. I always get to say I love you so very much because I love you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you all so very much. Tomorrow is another day. I got to go. Bisous, bisous. Je vous aime avec tout mon cœur. Hi.